explaining to our viewers, Gabe, what's happening. Yeah. All right, let's uh, check the picks. We have Infamous against uh, LGD. I, I gotta say a couple of things before we start. Infamous, I watched them play during Changsha Major. They ended up losing every single game. Unlike the other South American team, Pain Gaming, which I'm a huge fan of, yeah. they, they're not doing as great. But uh, there's always the upset factor. There's an underdog team playing against overall a way better team, but still it's Dota 2 and anything can happen. So let's check the picks. That Profit banned out. LGD loves to run it most of the time, just the first picks. That we, we saw yesterday also in all three games that we casted, DP was the first pick, you know, all three of them. Yeah, it was uh, kind of seen all over the place, and now this time left completely. And I'm kind of wondering if that's because I don't know. I, I feel like I've seen a lot of DPS like lose their lanes and then still go on to win the game, and I've also seen a lot of them just lose the game. I don't. I don't know if that hero is worthy <laughs> of first pick anymore. I'm not sure if I'm fully on board with it. It still gives you the tower damage, the team fight potential, the roche. So the hero is still gonna be good. It received a couple of nerfs. The needed ones. At one point, DP was really OP. Yeah. And paired together with some of those strong laning heroes, like a Tusk or something in the mid lane, you can suddenly just dive somebody and they're going to go down and also save but stuff. Uh, the thing that I'm really excited about this game is the Jakiro. Uh, people don't have to talk about it, but I feel like this hero is pretty heavily underrated. Um, and I'm a big fan of Jakiro. I think he's like great team fight, good for pushing waves, strong laner, everything you can want out of position five. Yeah, pretty much, and can be played as mid, right? As well, if needed, we saw that yesterday. Jakiro's the utility hero provides you with pretty much anything. Scales well into the late game, good at the laning stage, as you mentioned, especially in those dual lanes, a lot of kill potential. And we have a Pangolier. I'm not sure what the feel about this hero. VP loves to run it. Ice 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 as well. This hero doesn't have a strong laning stage. That's that's really the problem. And if you dual lane with the Pango, then you're taking a lot of his Radiant XP, team. which he needs. He yeah. relies so much on getting the his spells up. Yeah, he uh, he definitely, and I, I think that like. Once you get the initial salvo, you can sometimes do with the dual lane where your plan is just, okay, kill that off laner, or rather safe laner. But if you don't manage to find that kill, then you're kind of in a crappy situation for the rest of your lane. Ten seconds remaining. Bango is uh, also received a couple of nerves as well. Five seconds I, I mean, if you watch your pub games, what a lot of Pangoliers does, they just cut the creep wave, steal all the farm on the map, and let's say do nothing but th this hero needs to be played as a utility no more stacking javelins even though you can just get one just for the extra burst damage that that's what i kind of like and that's what pasha does with it before you get a blink dagger just have one javelin so you can actually deal damage with swashbuckle yeah, it's a surprising amount of damage, too, like how much is depending upon what procs you get. But Infamous going to go into their bag of tricks and pull out an Earth Spirit. This hero has been basically dead. I don't like the Earth Spirit because he doesn't provide anything in these dual lanes. Maybe if he's paired up with a hero like a Darkseer. Otherwise, I'm really not feeling the hero. And having Radiant Tango and Earth Spirit, Roomasa. that just feels really weak. Yes, they're, they're really mobile. They have good potential when they get the levels, but if they're going to share the experience, especially against the heroes, let's say if they face Jakiro and Mirana, mm -hmm. they're just going to lose the lane. Too much harassment. Also, I got to say a couple of things about Mirana. Mirana received Ten few buffs on remaining. the attack speed when she uses the leap. Five seconds the, the amount of the damage that she deals during the, the leap time is, you sh should really be careful about it, attacking Morana if she has those leap charges up. Yeah, it's it's really surprising. I was able to fit in a few pub games while I was watching the Super Major last night when we got done casting, and um, I just got solo killed by the Morana. I was like, oh right, that attack speed. Uh, it's kind of insane how much it does. And yes. 
I mean, you granted, need to get good Gabe, I and you're to... not gonna die that much. Oh, yes, just give good. To I agree. Thank you for that. But the thing I was gonna say is that even for pro players, right? You you build up these expectations in your head of what this hero is capable of. And when these new changes come out and then suddenly you go into a, uh, a new tournament, um, maybe you're not fully prepared for that. I think that these teams yes. probably will be, but it's a possibility. You're not expecting that amount of the damage in such a short notice. If she has face boots with the leap, she's dealing a ton of damage. She has more than 100 damage per hit. So Razor Band out and Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is the hero that I like to see. He also got buffed a lot and can really work as a mid hero or as a safe lane. I prefer him to have to be on the mid lane because of the dual lanes. You have these uh, heroes who are constantly on low HP early on, and in that way, Bloodseeker can just dominate his lane. Yeah, I, I am fully on the Bloodseeker chain. As soon as I saw that change. Eight armor at level ten. I was. It just blows my mind. It's so <laughs> ridiculous, uh, and that's the only problem that this hero really has. I think is the squishiness remaining. and the ability to blow him up. So combo that together with like a blade mail, or if you want to go the radiance build remaining. or whatever it is. Um, it definitely feels like he can be quite strong. So uh, banning him out. Good decision. Void and now the Luna from Infamous. So this is their get out of jail free card. See if Minnows can make it happen. Do you like it? Nah, not exactly. I really don't. I gotta say, I really don't like the lineup from Infamous. Gyro, Luna, there's a lot of ways to deal with... This is the lineup that kind of deals with illusions when I see these two heroes, but there's none on the side of LGD. I, I, this feels more like a, a like a random heroes from from what I see. I don't see any synergy. They can't combine Bane with anything. This really feels like a weird-looking lineup from Infamous. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the idea is. I mean, I guess when I say get out of jail free card, I think with Minnows, it's that like if you can get the Luna farmed, it, we've seen these Lunas get out of control. Uh, but it's a question of is this that type of lineup that's going to make that happen? And as you say, it could run into some issues. I think the biggest X factor for me is going to be that Earth Spirit and what he gets done. Uh, because we haven't seen that many roaming type of heroes, and a hero that doesn't have a great spot in the laning stage. I want to see what his starting item build is, is going to be. Him? Looks like he takes the uh, looks like he takes the orb of venom, normal stuff from him. But we'll, we'll see how it works out. It, it could be a tough game for him. Yeah, but third spirit did the best because he has this rolling boulder. He can pick the runes, get the extra gold, roam between the mid and and the side lane. Right now, he can't really do that. Yeah. And it's going to be Murana on mid, which is pretty hard hero to kill if you want to go with the Earth Spirit. You miss a roll, you're going to be in a, such a bad spot, you're probably going to die. So let's check the Pangos item build. It's going to be three Mangos, six Tangos, a lot of region. Pangolier really squishy early on. Does not have a lot of HP. Yeah. Look at his, look at his strength. 17 so that's really low i think that's the lowest hp hero in this game that's kind of insane yeah and as you said a lot of regen but not a whole heck of a lot of stat items mainly just that stout shield yeah. and then well, other stuff luna has 16 strength but she's naturally built into into some stats items so she has more hp yeah well, we'll watch how it works out for him still a lot of things to be positive about for the LGD, or rather the uh, for the infamous draft. I'm already saying it. LGD is in a good position. Uh, but Matthew, this is one of his like signature heroes. Um, he has played so many games on the Earth Spirit in the past. And, you back. know, if there was a guy that could bring it back, he might be one of the ones that would be on my short list to make it happen. Uh, Ame, though, going to be on that faceless void, which uh, we've also seen be able to take over games with the Mirana in tow. It's going to be a lot of damage to pump into that Chronosphere. Moving forward, Infamous will be able to force back LGD from this one while LGD secure themselves two runes. The battle begins. Oh, Stinger, he picks it up. He managed to snatch the rune in front of the Brewmaster. 
pretty nice. So they're swapping the lanes. They don't want to face the Bane with Faceless Void and Luna. There's going to be a lot of right-click harassment. Extra damage from Lunar Blessing plus a Brain Sap. Be pain in the ass for Void. So they already started to switch the lanes. Pay attention. They don't want to TP. So they're always one step ahead. If Infamous decides to react, they need to TP. They can TP back. Yeah, a very frustrating thing to happen at the beginning, obviously. And so far, Pepita, though, off to a couple of denies there onto the Marana, including the range creep. So a decent start for him. Um, bottom lane, X Nova and Ame versus the Pangolier. We talk about the harassment. How, how rough of a Zelene is this for uh, Old Stinger? Yes. <laughs> well, he has two CS because they were swapping the lanes, but it's going to be really hard, especially when they get the levels. I also expect. Faceless Void to get one point in time dilation, maybe at level 4. So there's gonna be a lot of slow. This hero's not gonna move. And because he uses those spells pretty frequently, you can always have the time dilation and just slow him down and kill him. Um, obviously, if he doesn't use that ultimate for, uh, or rather the Q for farming, he's gonna be in a lot of issues. So he'll keep it back as Papita getting a good bit of harassment there from. Mr. Somnus, but the missile spam will continue to fly. And at least for now, everything looking fairly static. And yeah, and look at the top lane. It's a trial lane against a dual lane. If they get someone into the cogs, they could easily score a kill. That's a double slow plus battery assault. By double slow, I mean Orb of Phenom plus Thunderclap. Also, they have a Drunken Haze, so... I really don't see what Earth Spirit is going to provide on the top lane. And as I mentioned, he can't really just go on a mid lane because that's a tough kill to get. Also, I love the build on Marana. Two points in Starstorm. Um, I, <laughs> I started because I always called it Starfall. Oh, yeah. That's the old name. And uh, one point in lead. He's not going to use any arrows. He just wants to harass. Well, mid lane, or rather top lane, they get the kill onto Chalice, but it comes at the cost of Minnows. And now Excel also looking like he's going to go down the roll forward. Matthew trying to save his buddy, and the Brain Sap is going to be there to turn it with Luna TP back in. They might be able to keep Matthew alive for the moment, actually, and gets the salve off the turnaround, and FY in some trouble now. He's going to be able to find that Lucent Beam and get the kill as Excel being ran down can maybe walk into the creep wave there, wanting to take it down. He doesn't manage to get the deny. Instead, it's going to be X Nova walking away. Roll forward, Lucent Beam again. Next Nova almost dead. The slow down though, and is going to be able to find that finish. His Chalice chases another Lucid Beam, and Matthew he walks away. Oh, Matthew! Because he got that first blood, he bought the boots, so he was able to run away and score one extra kill. Also, he had the Fairy Fire, which kept him alive. <laughs> the bottom lane, we see Pangolier. He's going for a bottle build, buying it in the side shop. The bottle is really valuable right now because it provides more region. I mean, you're not going to pick up that many runes, but at the five minute mark, if you can get the both runes, you're going to be full HP. Yeah. Could be oh, really nice. two bashes in a row on the bottom lane. Uh-oh. He didn't think about going for that one again. Old Stinger just willing to get up in his face. And another bash that might have been a kill, but no such luck. So the four minute mark is going to come in now and Illusion Rune spawns bottom. And taking a look at the CS, you can see that LGD, in spite of Radiant those couple of kills scanning. into the favor of Infamous, they're the ones leading this one and doing a good job of it. Yeah, it doesn't mean that much that they're getting those early kills because you don't get much gold out of it. And it's a trial lane, so they're sharing the experience. Luna is level three. I've seen more Lunas getting two points in Lunar Blessing instead of going two points in Lucent not. Beam, these three versus three scenarios, because it maximizes your damage output, especially with the heroes like a Bane, who deals a ton of damage with just the right clicks. God, and with three heroes here now, Matthew is going to be in the cogs, and Chalice walks forward. It's a lot of damage onto this guy. The stun, the roll is not going to get him out of there, and they find the kill, and now it sets up LGD to potentially secure themselves some rooms. <laughs> oh, old Stinger. He's getting one definitely. Oh, bash. 
He's gonna go for it. Look at the X Nova positioning. He's waiting for him. Oh man, and they got in the bash. Is it gonna be there in time? They find it. Second hit. And they get the kill. Um is getting way too much bashes, man. The, the, <laughs> if you're Pangolier, that would be so annoying to play against. Every time I watch him attacking the Pangolier, he gets the bash. It feels like every third hit is a bash. He just broke the map. It's 20%, <laughs> so it should be every fifth. That's what I'm saying, man. It's, it's not happening. And they also end up tipping the uh, Pangolier afterwards. Kiro does so nicely played as Papita trying to take down FY. It's a lot of damage, and Matthew moves in. They find themselves a kill. So they decide to rotate it up, and he's going to instead bring the Jakiro, or rather the Gyrocopter top lane with these level five. Gyro Kiro, you say. Hey, man, it's happening. Rune coming out. Oh, Arcane Rune. Radiant's Spirit's gonna pick it up. Marana, no points in Moonlight Shadow, even though it could be valuable early on because they're not investing into the sentries and thus supports are kind of kind of poor. So you could get it, but he wants to have the maximum amount of the damage output. I mean, it makes sense, right? You gotta go for that early on if possible. It's good, it's not that mana cost 75, but you can get the gangs going, you can save people. And looking mid lane now also, Matthew trying to set up on a Somnus, but you talked about this before, it's a really hard hero to gank this Marana, and every second that he's standing there is just kind of either soaking up experience away from the gyro or not really making else happen. <laughs> Panda's getting close to level 6, actually, because they're sharing so much XP on this tri lane. Luna is only level 4, it's very 3. Bane's gonna get uh, closer to level 4. Good ward placed by FY. He can place it from from the fog, and this barely gets the ward, and it provides so much vision where the supports are standing. Yeah, and I mean, I guess that is one thing to be said, is that, like, they're sharing that experience, as you said, and so the supports are probably going to be a little bit more vulnerable. And Bane just placed the ward, so his ward is going to get the ward. Instant sentry board by FY. Sentry, so much value right now, especially at the later stages. Yeah. You get more, you get more out of it. You don't just get the 100 gold, because it, it scales as time goes on. Bottom lane, Pangolier with the ulti. Is there any kind of a rotation? Hitting nobody. He does get there onto the Faceless Void, but Void also has a Chronosphere. If they want to go for this, they could try and take down Stinger. And Instead, Ame decides, I just want to farm. Don't worry about these things. As long as he keeps that Chrono up, it's always a threat of it to come out. Oh, smoke rotation. Gyro picked up Haste Rune. Uh, top lane also, they pop the ultimate and gonna take down the Luna. As Minnow's down very low, he can get into range with the Hurl Boulder. Another Windwalk damage comes out, they find the kill, the finishes. Ame is here as well. Be a little bit careful, and the smoke rotation with the Gyrocopter doesn't get them anything. Yeah, because Ame read them well. <laughs> he TP topped, they wanted to gank the Luna, but Panda's solo killer, so they still have a Chronosphere. A lot of time wasted by Gyro and the rest of the team. Ooh, Arrow barely misses. Jump forward, that leap attack speed just takes him down. Somnus doing far too much damage. I love this chat wheel. <laughs> it, uh, it's definitely something, you know? It's uh, a little bit crazy. I need to ask Jack what that means. I think he said it was a good one, but I don't remember what he said it was. Uh, it sounds like they're very upset about something. <laughs> but level-wise, we can talk about this some more. Hitting that level 6 early for the Brew. There aren't really that many other game-changing ones, I would say, for the Radiant, really. Like, what are you going to do? I guess cooldown is a big one? It's not a big ultimate. I mean, they have heroes that can pretty much fight all the time. X Noah. Yeah, they're gonna kill him on the bottom lane. So they swap the lanes, they're keeping Ame on top. And it's gonna be like that, probably. He does not wanna get ganked on the bottom lane. They have better vision on the top lane. They also devorded the ward. 
it's gonna be. I mean, they don't have too much control for this faceless void. They have Bane's grip and Earth Spirit needs to hit his spells. Right. We did see three runes picked up there, I believe, for the side of LGD. So continuing to accentuate that lead up to 2,000 net worth right now at 10 minutes in. Uh, even though the kill score is so even, they're just getting more out of the map, it feels like. Chalice runs into his cell. He has his Bruce split now if they want to go for it. And they're just going to turn it back around now. Try and take down this Bane as they are going to have a Hurl Boulder in a second. And gets the connection there. The wind walk damage. It comes out. I fell dead. Oh, also Pango there forced to use the ulti on the top lane. LTD's vision game is always strong. I love this ward on the bottom lane. Even though you can't see my pings because you're not in game. We're watching through the Dota TV. Oh, what happens? Oh, Marana level 10. Now that she picks up the damage talent, has a javelin and double damage in the bottle. Oh my god. She can kill anyone at this point. Out now as Ame is in the area of the silence. Oh, the great play from Matthew. We wanted to chrono that one, but instead they're going to end up losing two most likely. Great play from the Earth Spirit as he manages to find that, and X Nova will eventually go down. Yeah, but still, unchanged network lead for all oh, oh Pango Man. What are you oh doing? My God. <laughs> all right, that was terrifying. Yeah, she has more than 200 damage with 120 increased attack speed from the lead. Man, and I they killed the Luna. So net worth keeps increasing and it's gonna continue to do so. Earth Spirit hits level 6, so they wanna take a fight. Chrono is up again. Yeah. Face Void has Mask of Madness ready. Can I talk for a second about how cool that leap chase was onto Pango? Because, like, he leaped into the one spot in those trees where he could have found him there and continued the fight. So, really cool stuff from maybe. Uh, just showing off his skills on that Marana. I think Marana's going to be picked more often. He hero received a couple of buffs, and uh, it feels like it fits the meta right now. Yeah. They need to get the... Brewmaster of Blink Dagger, he's gonna, okay, he's gonna sell one item, Stout Shield, and he has it. Chalice, TP ready? Yeah, they are gonna have also Jakiro, he has level 5 now, so the Ice Path is gonna be there. They're also gonna have a Chronosphere coming in, they go for the initiation, able to find it, onto the Silence was not there in time, and now Pepita getting chased down as well, Ame looking for his opening. As they know that Minos is in the area and Moran is going to chase him down. They find the arrow connection for the kill. Minos is dead. They are falling apart here. 4K for LGD. Fine, let's say 5K. Yeah, fair enough. So we come back to the team fight. Potential that they have with their lineup. They were just waiting for the blink dagger on the panda. And if you look at how they execute, they TP with the Brewmaster in the fog on top lane. One hero is already there. Other heroes coming from the side. One TP shrine. So maximum execution. They're not wasting time with the double, triple TPs on top. So everyone is there at the time. So you need to communicate about who's going to TP first, have priorities if you're not uh, talking. Let's say just if you're playing pubs in general, like yeah. you need to know which hero TPs first. Right. Uh, it's so integral to that. And, you know, you look at this also, th throughout that entire duration, Chronosphere ends up being used, but you've got these heroes that are coming online so quickly. I think it's the Maelstrom also. Like, it's the itemization that they're going for. You have it on Marana, also going to go back for one on Void after the fact. So they've got so much magical damage. It feels like this is one of the items of the patch. Uh, yes, the exactly. Vita going to be found. The call down is there, but the right clicks throwing it out with all of the damage over time coming through. He's dropping down low, but not low enough for the kill. You were talking about Maelstrom. It's really hot item right now because procs cannot be evaded anymore. It's a good way to deal with solar crests, with butterflies. And it just increases your farming capability. Look at the amount of the damage. 170 magical damage. Oh, if the proc hits. Yeah. 25 chance. 
I mean, that's insane, right? It's it's like basically a free nuke, a, like a large nuke every time that you hit it on somebody, and that's more than enough to kill with most Radiant's of these heroes. It's balanced around them attack. not being able to solo kill by somebody, except with one more nuke, oftentimes, and well, they get it with the Maelstrom. Yeah, and you can easily shout out the waves with it, no matter on which hero you build it with. So face what it's gonna have it after this creep wave. X Nova gonna die top lane to the Tango ultimate combo together with the Bane Brain Sap. Easy kill for them there. But still, it is LGD that are making the better moves around the map. So even though you find that kill, it's only on a Jakiro and LGD are just controlling this entire other side. Earth Spirit also gonna be found and killed off. Or rather, uh, yeah, Earth Spirit. FY was there. This guy is a player. Under yeah, I love FY. He, <laughs> the the old duo Radiant FY and Fenrir, been a fan since those days. Oh, hook shot in now, able to find it on to two, trying to bring up Spita. He is going to fall here. It looks like as the right clicks come through and take down that gyro. There's no synergy between infamous heroes. Okay, Fangolier has a blink dagger. But uh, I don't see them starting a fight. Both of these cores, they need a BKB. Gyrocopter only with the Ogre Axe. Luna is not even building one right now. And they pop the Eclipse there as well. Maybe just leaps away. He got that one leap off before the silence came in for Matthew and manages to dodge away from the other one. They're thinking about it. Primal Aid. Well, that is uh, not how you want to play Dota. Yeah, they don't have the best Radiant comeback Sand. potential. Both of their cores farm extremely fast. Gyro with the Flak and Luna with the Glaives. But uh, they don't have the space to farm because LGD is shutting them down. Well, speaking of FY, he's found in the mid lane. Does have the pipe and everything else. And Unfortunately for him, not able to get out of there. Although Gyro is now stuck here inside the cogs. The jump board, they find the Chronosphere. And Ame able to take this guy down, most likely dodges the stone. And he kills him off. And now Matthew is going to pay for his insolence as they chase him down. The jump board, Ame able to block him off before he rolls away. LGD doing everything right. Yeah, that fight was just Faceless Void and the Brewmaster. They didn't even use the split. They didn't even have Marana there. Marana with the full BKB in her backpack. And decides to go for 100 extra leap attack speed. So th these Mjolnir procs <laughs> are gonna keep popping. Yeah, these guys are out of control right now. And I, I think we'd be doing a disservice to the community if we didn't say at the very beginning of this, oh no, they got him caught! He does have Swashbuckle to try and get away, but Old Stinger gonna be cut off at the pass as Phallus has found this guy. Does have a shield crash on the Rolling Boulder? Can he get out of here around the Rolling Thunder? Well, and he's gone. Still a hero. Ooh, Flare. Oh my god! <laughs> FY! Are you he kidding actually me? actually got him. After Blink Dagger, one more shield crash and Swashbuckle, he actually predicted that even though they have a ward here, so I'm not mean, sure if he was in vision. He wasn't in vision though. Th that was after the fact. I, yeah, I mean, he shot the rocket before, so it doesn't matter if he had a vision or not. That was insane. All right. <laughs> FY showing up on the big stage. And I mean, what I was going to say is that this is a team that is clearly ahead of Infamous as far as the results this year. They've already qualified for TI, everything else. And Infamous hasn't been looking that great either. Kind of expecting these results, but LGD are not stopping at all. They're asserting nah, dominance. They want to close this game. They have three points in Liquid Fire, so that's the tower damage plus Marana. They just need to take one more fight, and maybe they're going to go for the Raxus as well. 12,000 network lead. The map is kind of shrinking for Infamous right now. They don't have the space Radiant's to farm. Luna, Dragonlance, Mask of Madness completed, working towards the BKB. That's the item she desperately needs, but 
Still a lot of physical damage, even if she pops the BKB. And we got from Faceless Void and Morana. You know, people, I, and again, I don't want to harp on it too much, but people, you know, they might look at that and say, you know, FY map hacks. If you had map hacks, you couldn't hit that rocket. That, that's not even just about being able to see the vision. It's anticipated it's all. Kong's pushed back on the two. FY, gonna make it happen here as he has been able to catch Excel. Ame moving forward for this one. They have a chrono. But be tidy. They don't have a chrono. Oh, okay, excuse me. They do not have a chrono. Fake news, but they will catch out and kill off Excel. Yeah, you were just. You just wanted to see if I'm paying attention, right? Thank you. I appreciate that. You know. <laughs> That's why I'm here, Gabe, to see those little things. You're you're just a, a hero and a scholar. All right, well, LGD gonna take down the final tier two tower at 21 minutes. And, I mean, my God, just look at his net worth right now, and it is not feeling like the cores from LGD are where the infamous are where they need to be. They're getting close to BKBs on Gyrocopter. That could maybe start to make a little bit of a change. Um, Luna's still far away from hers, though. Again, they have a lot of physical damage. Faceless Void even went for 100 extra time lock damage. Ooh. So he's all in on the damage, just yeah. relying on that RNG. And he took the 20 damage talent too, so it's no strength, no health, no nothing. It's all in, like you said. Hey, 20 damage is pretty common. That's kind of oh. must go to at level 10, but level 15. Down bottom, they've got X Nova stuck up on the high ground. He gets a little bit in a kerfuffle, but the jump board, Som is gonna start to go to work. Wants to tear through one, can he find another? He needs to get the hell out of here, because those claves are doing their work. They throw the hurl boulder out, all these, well, jump in as well. They're able to find themselves another. Are they gonna kill off the brute inside of his ultimate? And maybe ends up dying as well. Ame wants to play Queen of Squad, but LGD are just losing hero after hero here, and they're gonna lose another one. BKB, Chrono ready, and Mask of Madness. He might kill them all. All right, he's thinking about it right now. Looking forward, able to catch it on the three. How do you catch three? You knew he was coming back. They take him down. Triple kill for Ame. I think you. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I mean, BKB just got delivered. Even without the BKB, they were all clumping up for the Chrono. At least they're getting a couple of return kills. They got, what, five, 600 gold away for killing Somnus. Oh my god. But everyone else pretty much died. <laughs> well, that that's a rough one. Uh, and Infamous now feeling a little bit shook after that initial stage. It's 13,000 net worth lead right now into the favor of LGD. And Mjolnir is going to be up for the Faceless Void as well relatively soon. What's going good right now for Infamous? I mean, they've got Blink on Pango, I guess. They can fight for high ground at the very least. Yeah, if Pango gets that uh, Crimson Guard, he's gonna mitigate a lot of the right click damage. But it's still a physical damage. So, a lot of magical damage still coming through the Mjolnir and Faceless Voids. Uh, Maelstrom. Pepita is dead. He might have just been able to be, or, uh, just TP away from there since Chalice didn't have his ultimate off cooldown, but. Nonetheless, it uh, does not work out for him, and Gyrocopter goes down. Mid lane. Ame, no chrono, but the bash out bash. of the boulder! The BKB, he's got a haste turn. He's going to chase down this guy. Look at this. This is insanely <laughs> right now. What the hell is going on? I mean, BKB charged down. You take that. Uh, this was funny to watch. <laughs> You know, case that faceless void with the BKB chasing Pangolier in ultimate. You know what's one of the better heroes against the Pango? Bloodseeker. You just ult him oh, yeah. during his ult and he can't do anything about it. He's just gonna die. I gotta say that, you know, the fact that this game is 15,000 net worth up right now for LGD, they're still making it an entertaining game. Shadows take it's, uh, it's, it's a I pretty solid one. LGD may be underestimating their opponent. They were trying to take a fight without their best tool, and that's the Chronosphere. 
Oh, and now they have found themselves yet another. It's a Fiend's Grip. It's a nice opening there. The BKB comes out, but there is going to be the Chronosphere. It catches on to two, and they've got him isolated. Luna going to fall. Old Stinger, nowhere left to go. They take him down as well. LGD back on top. Yeah, they just needed to group up as five and take a fight. I really don't see Infamous coming back into this game unless LGD overextend and make a couple of crucial mistakes, which I don't think it's gonna happen. That's a really disciplined team that knows how to finish a game and knows when to finish a game. 25 minutes in, the BKB is done for Gyrocopter, and we said it's a nice thing to pick up there, but with Luna being dead now, no more clips for 90 seconds. This is at the very least one set of racks. And maybe more as well, though they do have the Enfeeble on them. They roll into the ice pad. A little bit unfortunate there. Ame getting up close and personal. Turns, Bash is stealing the damage. But Pizza needs to get out of there. And he will back out. Maybe sticking around a bit too long. The jump in. Okay, Pangolier. The silence is there as well. Can they kill off Ame? This would be a huge kill for them. And they manage to find it. Now the chase board for more. Matthew, does he have another rolling boulder? He does have the smash. But it's a bit too hard to find that. Another rolling boulder in two. And the follow-up stun gets a nice one there. But not able to find the silence after the fact. There it is connecting and jump forward. But FY able to find the back lines and isolate Minnows. He's away from there as well as they chase down another one. The fight breaking off into several sections. And this is actually favoring Infamous for the moment as they're managing to take down an isolate FY. But they walk back Double into the fight now to the side. And Marana is just going to go to work. Too much damage. Too quick. And the triple kill is there. And now Papita need to get the hell out of here as there's an arrow oh. available. Look at Marana. It doesn't look like Dota 2 hero. She's glowing oh, no. with the double damage and green Mjolnir. Attack. No, no leap. Five seconds. Yeah, she's not going to be able to find it, but... I mean, again, the fact that Infamous are able to fight into this is kind of insane. Yeah, because, as I mentioned, LGD just needs to overextend. BKB popped on faces, so it tries to fight against the gyro, whole BKB duration gone, and melee Rax was on 100 Radiant's HP. So. Are under attack. Yeah. yeah, the Marana had too many particle effects on her, fall. that's for sure. <laughs> Radiant's top tower is under attack. The amount of the damage that Marana deals right now is just way too much. Level 20, extra 25 mana break that goes to the extra damage is building towards the MKB is gonna have she actually has MKB the hundred at leap attack speed talent too so up to 220 attack speed bonus with yeah. every leap oh god MKB next what do you think about instead of the moonlight shadow cooldown like a plus five leap charges talent <laughs> okay okay Gabe. I need you to calm down right now well, <laughs> awesome. I remember when Grant was talking about permanent moonlight shadow. W what's the downtime? It's creation 18, so it's two seconds downtime, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, is so that it can right? be perma invis. Yeah, 20 second downtime. But it lasts for 18 seconds. Oh, you're seconds. right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, sorry, my bad. And a math. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Minnows thinks that's funny too. Um, they need to find something in this game because it is a, a rough one, that is for sure. And. I mean, two multi shots, uh, Sacred Arrows is just way too good not to have. I agree. Like, it, it's not just about stunning people, it's about providing vision in a team fight. Yeah. I could have hit yeah, in a way that feels like the most important part of it, really. Chalice walks in here as well. They're going to be able to take down Roshan very quick and easy. Although, they've got heroes in the area. The feed script onto Chalice. No, he walked out of range. They didn't find it there. And now the lift up onto the Pango. He's going to try and get himself out of there. And it is going to be Somnus picking up the ages. The stun comes out, but not before they kill off Old Stinger Arrow to follow. Got to patch out for that one. That is a death arrow. 
And the Fiend's grip onto Chalice. Can they bring him down in time? Not going to happen. They're able to find that hook shot to interrupt and excel in trouble as Marana beats him down. And she's still hanging on to that Aegis as well. So even if they manage to kill her, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. The Kronos here on the back of it all. They find themselves the Luna in the duration of the BKB. Tries to turn this back around and might be a good bit of damage as well. But is it going to be enough? Minos is going to fall and they do manage to take down the Brewmaster. But Stinger going to fall as well. And with that, oh, one more ice path. Why not? They take it down. That's five dead on the side of Infamous. They might call this game. They use the cheese. Marana still have Aegis. This it means that these Raxes are gonna be lost for Infamous. So one, still one Rax is left on the bottom lane. Do they have a buyback? Gyro has a buyback. It was a dieback on. Tango too, so yeah. On for even longer. Top tower has fallen. Yeah, this is like you said, at the very least one, and it looks like mid lane is also going to be taken. Radiance so if they want to, they can rotate down bottom or just possibly head in with the creep wave. I guess they don't have Chrono. It might be a little bit scary. I mean, if you just want to take it home safely, you wait for the next Chrono reset. Heal up on Marana. Aegis is still there. FY has five urn charges so he can heal up Marana. The body body system, there it goes. Yeah. Looks like Ame is comfortable just farming, and it's like almost the same build as the. I guess Marana is a little bit different. No Mask of Madness. Instead going for the completed Mjolnir. But nonetheless. 30,000 net worth lead into the favor of LGD and Ame. He just spots out Minos. No BKB, uh, or rather no Chronosphere, but BKB comes out and now chasing for more. I don't need to. <laughs> they ran out of tips, but they still got the chat wheel. It's one of those games where it feels... The game is over for 15 minutes. They just need time to close it because they need to reset. The spells are on cooldown. They don't want to risk anything. And when it's time to finish, it's time to finish. Oh, nice stun. Multiples, the bean script as well. They do manage to interrupt it though. And there's going to be the macro fire as well. They do bring down one, but a three person right now. Caught in the corner. There's actually four total. Ame triple kill. He's going to work. Ultra for him. They're going to buy back give this man the rampage it feels like as they jump forward find themselves another Ame wanting to take this kill for himself can he get it he does indeed and Ame has been the man of the match unbelievable oh look at this man Ame has played extremely well uh, but I gotta give credit to Mavius or his Marana was really on point the item build the triple leap level 15 attack speed talent by attack speed, I mean leap attack speed. If, let's say, they play 10 out of 10 games, teams of equal skill, I think 9 out of the 10 times, Dire lineup would win. The, the Radiant lineup, I did not see any synergy. There's a reason why Earth Spirit is not picked, because he's weak. He's weak in the laning stage. Yes, he's going to get a couple of the kills. He has extra damage from the Luna. Bane is a great laner, provides a lot of pressure and damage in the laning stage. Other than that, it's really hard for them to fight. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, you, you take a look at this. Um, I switched over there because I want to see if we can hop into the lobby. I want to make sure we don't miss it this time. Again, apologize to everybody out there uh, that we didn't end up being in the, the game lobby. Um, but we will be in it for game number two. Uh, but, yeah, Infamous versus LGD, this feels like it was kind of a... The, the story that we we're expecting to see from the very beginning. Um, maybe LGD getting a little bit too forward at times with their play and a little bit too fancy free. Uh, but, you know, they can afford to do that when you're 30,000 net worth ahead. So we will see what happens in game number two right around the corner. Lacoste, any thoughts for it and what you expect to see? They need a different approach. Uh, South American's teams are known to have a, a different perspective and uh, different heroes that they play. These This of a lineup does not fit in the current meta and they need to adjust i think they should have something else prepared than this uh, most of the time you end up 
with lineup like this. If you try to counter the enemy heroes, you counter it with this, try to go like that. Suddenly you have a lineup that makes no sense and uh, hard to play with. Yeah. Well, ladies and gents, uh, thank you so much for tuning in and shout outs to Lacoste as well. Throughout that entire cast, I was muting my microphone and sneezing and coughing. I've got allergies galore. And he just stood up like that with like a champ and he didn't say anything. What a guy. You're you're just a you're a gem, Lacoste. I love you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. We'll be back in just a little bit with game number two. See you guys then. LGD versus Infamous, China Super Major. It's happening.